Y'all have one week to get this video 500 likes. If you do, one lucky subscriber who leaves a comment on this video will win four packs of the promo pack volume 0.0 for one piece. Welcome back everyone, my name is Steven, I'm your true champion, and this past week I got the pleasure to participate in a super pre-release event for the English version of the One Piece card game, and not only did I walk away with one of each starter deck to open for all of you in today's video, I also walked away with a Monkey D. Luffy winner promo because I won the super pre-release event I played in. This card is really beautiful, it's fetching a pretty penny right now on the secondary market, not quite sure what I'm going to do with my copy, but super happy to have it. But we're not here just to talk about my accomplishments at the beginning of the competitive One Piece season. We're here to talk about the actual cards that are going to be in these starter decks. Now, even though these super pre-release versions of these starter decks have special foil stamped cards as well as alternate art leaders, the actual cards within them are the same as these starter decks being released later this year in December. So if you were one of the unlucky few that didn't get to participate in a pre-release level event, knowing what cards are in these decks slash the competitive differences of each one should be helpful for you when it comes to making your own purchasing decisions later this year in December when the official decks come out. So yeah, we're going to open all four of these starter decks, talk about which ones I like the most and why, and I'll give you guys some recommendations on how you should purchase later this year if you don't already have your very own starter decks. With all that being said, let's go ahead, crack open these starter decks, and see what's inside. All right, y'all, here we are at the tabletop setup. I have the four starter decks for one piece in front of me. I have the Straw Hat Crew red starter deck, the worst generation green starter deck, the blue seven warlords of the sea starter deck, and the purple Animal Kingdom Pirates starter deck. Quick reminder, if you guys want to enter the giveaway for a playset of volume 0.0, .0 promo packs, all I got to do is leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below which of these decks is your favorite and why. With all that being said, let's go ahead and crack these bad boys open, starting with the Straw Hat Crew starter deck. Before I actually open this deck, I want to talk a little bit more about the contents and something really special that I noticed about these starter decks, or I guess strange that I noticed. Uh, these are all first first edition special releases of these starter decks that are not going to be released again uh, as long as the game exists. Uh, the cards in them are exactly the same, like the names and the effects, as the ones releasing in the official release in December, but uh, they got special hot stamp versions of cards as well as an alternate art promo leader that you won't see anywhere else. And the one surprising thing is how small the deck is. Like All that's in here is the deck, the 10 card Don deck, and the leader card. Uh, for a size comparison of other Bandai products, this is an American starter deck or an English starter deck for Digimon, and that is <laughs> the size comparison. The only thing in here is the cards and nothing else. Uh, very similar to the original Japanese version of Digimon starter decks. This is the original Gaia Red starter deck from 2020. There you go. This is, this is more similar. So, good to see them trying to kind of keep a more classic design rather than Americanize and big and everything. All right, let's go ahead and get this bad boy open. Whoo! That's it. Empty box. <laughs> Slide the plastic off. And we've got our first little glimpse at the cards in these starter decks. You can see here, if the camera will focus, that every single card has this super pre-release gold stamp on it. And the first 10 cards are going to be the Dawn that you use in your Dawn deck, which lets you pay for the costs of your cards. Super simple, nothing crazy. But this, this is what makes these starter decks, in my opinion, super special. That is the alternate art version of these leaders. For those that don't know, I actually was a part of the Anime Expo demo team for One Piece this July. And in the main exhibit hall, they actually had example versions of what these starter decks looked like in like a little kiosk little window thing and they never told us like where we were going to get these leaders but i always assumed it was going to be like box toppers or something special never knew it was going to be during the actual pre-release of this game anyway let's go on to the actual cards here we have the monkey d luffy leader all of these leaders have 5,000 power and a life value of five meaning you have five cards in your life stack at the beginning of every game we got the super pre-release stamp the beautiful art and his effect is activate main once per turn give this leader one of your or one of your characters one rested dawn card so from your cost area you can take a dawn that's rested and place it underneath the card giving the plus 1000 boost or even triggering any dawn x type effects 
The red deck, in my opinion, is probably the worst ratioed starter deck in terms of like the actual numbers of cards in here, but I really enjoy the play style of like optimizing how you use your resources, like playing a two drop and then taking one of those cards that you tap to pay the cost and placing it underneath to make it more powerful. Really resourceful, really efficient. I love to see it. So that's the leader card. I'll put it right here. And the card we have immediately after is another big one, the five drop. I think this is like the SR style of Luffy, so like a higher version of rarity. Got the pre-release stamp, 6,000 power, 5 cost to play. He's got Rush and the Dawn X2 effect. When attacking, your opponent cannot activate Blocker during this battle. So in theory, you pay 5, you drop this guy, you instantly attack. If you have 2 Dawn underneath him, he's 8,000, unblockable. Really hard to stop and a great late game finisher. You get 2 copies of this card. Up next, we have the three drop Roanoro Zoro. I believe that comes in at another two copies. He has the Dawn X1 effect. This character gains plus 1000 power. He has a base of five, and this is not just during your turn. So that means on both turns, He's 6,000 if he has a Dawn underneath him. Really powerful card. Uh, there's going to be a Rush version of Zoro that comes out in the first booster. That's also going to be crazy strong. So that's it for like the higher rarity version of cards in the red starter. Up next, we got some lower drops here. We got four copies of Usopp, four copies of the one drop vanilla Carpo or Karu, sorry. And then four copies of the two drop Sanji. So the... Usopp is a trigger card that plays when he's checked in the life and Dawn X2 when attacking your opponent cannot activate a blocker that has 5,000 or more power during this battle. So against like green decks or even purple decks that have really powerful blockers you can kind of like cheese past them and maybe get that final swing in for game. Uh, Karu like I said is just a one drop vanilla 3,000 uh, because you have so many ways to put Dawn on things in this deck it's really easy to make him powerful enough to deal damage or even KO other characters. And then finally we have Sanji personally my favorite two drop in this deck he has the Dawn X2 effect to give him rush so if you have Luffy plus the one drop Nami which is essentially the same effect as Luffy you play this guy you tap the two Dawn you put two, both Dawn underneath him and now he has has rush 6,000 power swings at your opponent really nice just like surprise attack out of nowhere really good aggressive tool for this deck up next we got some higher drop cards in Jim Bay some more low drop consistency cards in Tony Tony Chopper the blocker for this deck and then we have four copies of Nami personally the strongest card uh, I think in this deck because it's essentially another copy of your Luffy leader which just again adds to that resourceful nature of this deck being able to constantly put down on things the second you play them so that way you can maximize your board presence and your aggression like I said uh, chopper is just a one drop blocker really efficient saves you protects things you have in play that are rested from being swung at and then Jinbei is a really interesting card so he doesn't have a counter same as the Sanji and same as the Zoro, which you know makes him a little bit worse than other cards but his effect is actually really cool uh dawn x1 when attacking your leader or one of your characters other than this card gains power plus 1000 during that turn so again just makes it harder and harder for your opponent to actually counter out or even block the attacks that you have in play forces a lot of damage through you know just give him one he swings six give something else 1k you got like multiple uses out of a single dawn in terms of giving power up next we got four copies of the three drop nico robin she's a 5k vanilla we have two, four copies of the two drop 4k vanilla in Vivi and then four copies of the four drop vanilla in Frankie so these cards basically scale up with their Don cost two gives you four three gives you five four gives you six uh, in terms of the most useful one of these I would say Frankie is actually the best because if you just put a single Don on him that makes him 7,000 which usually forces two cards out of your opponent to counter out of a 2,000 counter and a 1,000 counter maybe more uh, and then it goes Nico because she doesn't require any extra resources just to get poke damage in against leaders or even against the normal range of character power. Uh, VV is the only one that you have to actually put Dawn on to do anything unless your opponent rests really weak characters, which if you're not playing against green, they don't really do. And finally, rounding off the characters for this starter deck, we have the biggest heartbreak out of any of the One Piece decks, two copies of the 2000 counter Brooke. Uh, some DBS players that I know call these super counters because they have stronger counter powers than 
other cards in the deck so they let you stop attacks a little bit easier and brook is actually a really good one he actually has an effect that can sometimes be useful uh but the fact that you only get two two thousand counters and other decks get like four slash like ways to search for their two thousand counters means this deck's defensive capabilities are lacking that said though it is still better than nothing uh if you want any of these two ofs to become four ofs you have to get multiple versions of these starter decks but no more than two moving on to the event cards of the deck we have two copies of guard point two copies of gum gum jet pistol and two copies of diable jambe so these are all actually really solid cards this is a one drop counter event card that you can use during the counter step to increase your leader or one of your characters power by 3000 it has a trigger effect to give one of your leaders or characters 1000 for the turn so not just for the battle but for the whole turn uh gum gum jet pistols are really powerful removal spell pay for ko something 6000 power or less really consistent it triggers and activates the main effect in life so you can basically use it as a security card to kind of save you from an extra attack and then diable john bay says main select one of your straw hat crew type leader or character cards your opponent cannot activate blocker if that leader or character attacks during this turn a lot of blockers in these decks are like the main ways these decks survive so being able to turn that off get in some guaranteed high power damage thanks to your dawn is really cool we do have a stage card which is basically like a field spell or a card that stays in play and has multiple effects each and every turn we have the thousand sunny two drop stage card activate main you may rest this stage and then one of your straw hat crew type leader or characters on your field gains plus 1000 power for the turn so it's like again just another way to constantly pump up your dudes uh make things like vv more powerful if you need to make things like karu more powerful if you need to slash make it really hard for your opponent to stop your unblockable attacks like monkey d luffy if i was doing like a rating system for these starter decks one being the worst 10 being the best i would give the red one a solid five because it's kind of like right in the middle for me of it does really cool things once you get multiple copies of all these cards so definitely watch out for red decks they can definitely sneak up on you with how sneakily powerful they can make their cards but in terms of like overall value and like how good each individual card is i definitely think it's on the lower side uh, compared to some of the other decks moving on to the green starter deck fun fact this is actually the deck that i used in my super pre-release to win and earn myself the monkey d luffy winner promo so i really like this deck i have a lot to say about it, about how strong i think it is and how i think it evolves as the meta for this game continues blasting right on past the 10 dawn here we have the leader of the green deck in eustace or captain kid now the green deck is kind of weird in that the overall theme of it just seems to be all these cards do cool things and the gimmick i guess they have that no other deck has is the ability to rest opposing characters to potentially swing at them or you know ko them or interact with them in some way but kid doesn't do any of that kid is just like a hard aggro leader he has the activate main once per turn pay three don you may treasure card from your hand and then set this leader to active so let's say he's rested after already attacking for the turn if you have three don in play you can just rest them trash a card from your hand restand attack again that's kind of the most common way that you win with this deck if you have your full 10 don you just save three put seven underneath him and then attack twice for 12. if your opponent has like no life you're probably winning on that turn moving on to some of the big cards in the deck we have two copies of the five drop law two copies of the eustace or captain kid and i'll pull out the two copies of basil hawkins while we're here these are kind of like the power cards in this deck the law on play lets you set one of your supernova or heart pirate type characters to active so if you have a basil hawkins in play that's rested you can play this for five restand it it can attack again right so multi-attacking is a big theme here uh use this captain kid the seven drop is probably the strongest like thing you can do in the starter deck meta for seven he's got seven thousand power he has blocker so he's huge and then don x1 end of your turn set this card to active so if you have a don on him you swing during your turn for eight thousand and at the end of your turn he readies able to block really awesome and then finally we have a card that i personally still have not used even though i've played like 10 plus games with this starter deck in particular uh called basil hawkins it's a really strong card though six thousand power five drop dawn x1 once per turn if this character battles your opponent's character set this card to active so basically if you swing at a character he'll automatically restand this does work if your opponent blocks the attack as well so let's say you attack the leader initially they block 
guess what? He gets to restand and still attack again. Really cool, awesome way to control the board slash also get damage at the same time. Let's go ahead and get all the vanillas out the way. We got, as same as the red deck, a four drop 6,000, a three drop 5,000, a two drop 4,000, and a one drop 3,000. Beppo, Heat, Vito, and Kobe. Again, the only two really worth talking about are the five and six drop. We're not as efficient in the green deck with using our Rested Dawn, so committing things like Beppo and Heat are actually liabilities because we constantly need to waste Dawn on them instead of paying for our heavier costed cards like any of these. So yeah, most of the time I just keep these guys in hand and I play these guys on board because I don't need to actually invest any more resources to make them actually useful. A thing I wanna point out is that Kobe is Navy so a play that you might think would be really good is like oh 7k and then if you play your law you can restand him and go 7k again but sadly uh, law cannot stand Kobe because Kobe is just a navy and not a supernova I'm speaking from experience uh, don't make that mistake <laughs> moving on to what are in my opinion some really useful cards we got four copies of X Drake four copies of the two drop counter in Scratchman Oppo and then two copies of Killer. So like I said, Oppo is the 2000 counter for the green deck. When attacking Dawn X1, rest one of your opponent's Dawn cards. I never played this card from my hand, but there is some niche uses for it, especially when you want to try to play around your opponent's defensive event cards because all of these decks have really powerful defensive event cards. So keep in mind, he can be useful, but he's probably best used as a counter. We got two copies of Killer, which is the trigger on play card in this deck. On play, KO one of your opponent's rested characters with a cost of three or less. So let's say your opponent swung with a veto at your life. You took it, you revealed this, you played it. You can now KO that veto for free. Uh, really strong card, actually, uh, and can be played through other methods in this deck as well. So super cool. Personally, one of the biggest MVPs, can't believe we have four of this in this deck, X Drake. Four cost, 5,000 power, Dawn X1, your turn. If this character is rested, your supernovas or navy type leaders and characters gain plus 1,000. So basically, by using one Dawn on him and swinging, we effectively give one Dawn to everything we have in play. And he's already swinging for 7k, which again is a really good magic number in One Piece. Uh, moving on to the cheaper cards, we got two copies of Urog, four copies of the one drop blocker Beige, and then finally rounding off the characters, the absolute strongest one drop period in one piece jewelry bonnie first things first bonnie one cost 1000 power activate main pay a dawn and then rest her look at the top five cards of your deck reveal one supernovas type card and add it to your hand then place the rest in the bottom of your deck in any order she can add killer she can add apo she can add any of your big drop cards this is the strongest searcher in the game we have so far and because it's so hard to just naturally draw extra cards in this deck if you keep bonnie in play and like protect her with blockers like beige or even your seven drop kid and you can use her through multiple turns it's just a constant resource engine that could potentially go infinite against your opponent. So this card is a soaker for an attacks, soakers for removal spells. Uh, your opponent almost always targets her down as soon as possible. That's how strong she is. And she only costs one Dawn, crazy. Speaking of really good cards for one Dawn, we got our one drop blocker in beige. Again, super useful card for just staying alive. Uh, that alongside the blocker kid gives us actually a healthy number of blockers compared to other decks. And then the two Urog, this card's weird. He can like hit for really good numbers during your turn, but I just never found a use for him. I, I almost rather just like put the two Dawn on my leader kid, swing for seven, and then potentially restand, swing for seven again, then play this dude. So not sure if I'd keep this card, but it could see some use. So like I said, that's it for the characters. Let's go ahead and take a look at the event cards. We have two copies of Scalpel. We have four copies of Repel. And then we have two copies of Straw Sword. So Scalpel, similar to uh, Guard Point, is the one drop counter for the deck. But instead of giving 3,000, it gives us 2,000 and lets us set one of our Dons to active. So essentially, it's a free counter gain 2,000. Really cool. Uh, next, we got Repel, which is counter pay to get 4,000 power, making our dude 9,000 on defense. Again, another, another really good magic number to hit is 9,000 because other decks have cards just like this. Uh, and then similar to Scalpel, basically it only costs one instead of two. So if you have the two Dawn, you pay it and then you put one to active afterwards. So you can like chain like two of these together if you only have two Dawn. And then finally we have Straw Sword, uh, two drop 
activate main rest one of your opponent's characters uh pretty simple you can like rest a blocker go in for game rest an annoying card then swing at it with one of your powerful dudes and then trigger effect play one supernovas type card with cost two or less from your hand really cool honestly besides playing beige or maybe the occasional free oppo that i'm going to use next turn to rest my opponent's cards there's really no good targets in this deck I think a lot of people in the community would say this is the best starter deck out of the box, and I would have to agree. The overall card quality is just crazy. The ratios of cards you get in here for Bonnie, for Oppo, for Drake is kind of stupid, but once you add in the potential for multiple starter decks as well as promo cards, I do think Kid kind of falls off until set one comes out, so I'm going to give this starter deck a solid eight. Up next, we have the blue seven warlords of the sea starter deck, my personal favorite out of all of them. And the reason for that is in my heart of hearts, no matter what card game I play, I'm a control player and nothing exemplifies the control play style more than the crocodile deck. Uh, and here's his effect. Activate main once per turn, Dawn minus four, return one character with a cost of five or less to the owner's hand. So that means you take four Dawn from anywhere in the board, put it back in the Dawn deck, and then you can activate that effect. So it's a way to just bounce cards on your board or your opponent's board back to the hand. You can reuse powerful on play effects. You can also just get rid of your opponent's threats and make them wait another turn before they can actually start using them because in this game there is summoning sickness. So if you play a character, it can't attack immediately. It has to wait one more turn. Doing this essentially skips two turns worth of attacks from one character. And yeah, that's kind of like what the whole deck is like. It has a lot of blockers in here to give you a really good defensive game plan and a lot of annoying interactive removal type effects just to mess with your opponent the entire time. Starting out with some of the big drops, we got two copies of the five drop Crocodile, two copies of the seven drop Don Flamingo, and I think I'll pull out another really good card in two copies of Gecko Moria. So like I said, this deck is themed after the seven Warlords of the Sea, so you're going to see a lot of the really big bad guys in this deck. Uh, the five drop Croc is a blocker with 6,000 power and the Don X1 on block effect. So when he blocks, place one character with a cost of two or less to the bottom of your owner's deck. The fact that it goes to the bottom is super huge. Not being able to give your opponent any counter power for your following turns offense is really neat and you're doing it while you're defending. So you're basically stopping an attack and making some of your next attacks stronger. The seven drop Don Quixote do Flamingo though is actually the best card in this deck seven drop seven thousand power on play return a character with a cost of seven or less to the owner's hand remember when i said that the green kit starter deck was one of the best ones and how one of the best cards was the seven drop kit well cards like do flamingo basically make seven drop kit a bad investment because you you know pay seven just to instantly pay seven again on the following turn if you do want to keep that card in play uh, and he doesn't have counter either so you're basically giving your opponent a dead card in their hand that wasted seven dawn so i really love Doflamingo, flamingo not for just how strong he is but for the actual removal presence he does and then finally we have the four drop gecko moria he basically on play adds the seven warlords back to your hand which just helps you keep up hand advantage while you're playing cards to aggress your opponent so basically, while you're removing all their cards, you can maintain a really solid kind of hand advantage as well as board advantage. Moving on, we got the Vanillas again. We got the four drop 6K Pacifista, the three drop 5K Edward Weevil, the one drop 3000 Buggy, and then the two drop 4000 Jinbei. Same, four is the best, three is all right. These can kind of be useful, but it really depends on the board state. And similar to the red starter deck, the blue one does have some ratio issues, like only two copies of Dracul Miha, your 2000 counter and two copies of Sentamaru, the probable best card in your deck and then two copies of Marshall D teach the four drop on play return a character with cost three or less to the owner's hand like I said out of all these cards Sentamaru is your best one three drop 4000 power Dawn X1 activate main once per turn pay two and just straight up play a pacifista from your deck this is without a doubt the strongest like plus one engine in any of these decks because you're getting a 6,000 body which you can easily turn into a 7,000 body and pressure your opponent. If you had like four copies of this card, this would no doubt be one of the strongest starters out of the box. And then again, only having two copies of your 2,000 counter is kind of sad, especially when Dracul is actually a really cool card. Dawn X1 when attacking, draw two and trash two cards from your hand can be super useful for filtering and looking for the pieces you want, like Doflamingos or even powerful event cards. 
But don't worry about having low amounts of counter because this deck makes up for it with the blockers. We got four copies of the Law Blocker one drop, four copies of Bartolomeo Kuma. He's not a blocker, but he's a two drop. And then we have four copies of Boa Hancock, a three drop blocker that does have counter. I'm pretty sure this is one of the only cards that has blocker and has counter. Yeah, even the five drop crocodile doesn't even have counter. So that's actually really, really useful. And trigger play this card so you can just like get a blocker when taking life damage so you can save yourself from potential lethal just with this card really powerful kuma is a little bit underwhelming to drop 3000 look at the top three cards of your deck and then rearrange them in any order it can help with consistency but the fact that you have to commit so much dawn to it to actually make it a threat is much to be desired and then one drop law, like I said, uh, that's always going to be really strong. In the future, we're going to have a deck from the original booster set that can actually, you know, summon this guy from the deck. So being able to get a blocker for free potentially uh, could be really cool. And then finally, we have what are probably the most powerful cards in the blue deck, the event cards. We have four copies, I can't believe it, of Sables, which is a four cost return a character with seven cost or less to the owner's hand. Trigger, activate this card's main effect. This is crazy. It's essentially the same effect as Don Quixote, but it's four cost and you just can bounce anything seven or less, which is every single card in all of these starter decks, except for the nine drop Kaido in the purple starter deck. Uh, from there, we have four copies of Thrust Pad Cannon, uh, two counter return one character with a cost three or less of the owner's hand. Fun fact, because counter happens after the block step, you can basically declare a block and then activate this during the counter step and then put that blocker back into your hand. And because you've already redirected the attack, it's still like, it just goes away basically your opponent's no longer attacking anything and you get the blocker back so that's a really cool interaction definitely keep it in mind in the future when you're going to events and then finally we have two copies of love love mellow it is the 4000 two drop counter for this deck and then draw one card if you have three or less cards in your hand so i find myself a lot of the time when i'm playing blue actually countering a lot because once i get down to like the later game and i only have three cards in hand i can basically play this and just stop an attack for free because i get to just redraw a new card really awesome cannot wait to get four copies of these uh for my completely finished blue deck so yeah there you guys go that is the blue seven warlords of the c starter deck from the super pre-release if i gave red a five and green an eight i think this is a solid six and a half like i think it's right there it has all the really high quality powerful cards that green has but it has the same like ratio issues and it's a lot harder to play. So I don't think it's gonna be as seamless a transition as playing red or green, but I do think it's powerful and should be respected. And finally, we have the purple Animal Kingdom Pirate starter deck with the leader being Kaido. If the blue deck was focused on control, this deck is focused on setup and just hard advantage. No deck uses Dawn better than the purple color. It's filled with Dawn minus effects that scale up constantly. You have ways to increase your Dawn count and make it even easier to activate those effects. Case in point, this Kaido leader has activate main once per turn, Dawn minus seven, trash one of your opponent's life cards. This is the main way you win with this deck. You essentially have like two or three attacks while your opponent has like two life. You use this effect, you put them down to one life and you just onslaught them and hopefully they die. If not, you'll do it on the next turn. Really cool card. Uh, I don't think people should use this effect early. Definitely only use it when you're going for game. Unlike all the rest of these decks, this one truly does live and die by its big bombs. The first one is 9 drop Kaido, 10,000 power, most expensive card in any of these starters. On play, Don minus 5, he gains rush and he KOs an opposing character with 6 cost or less. That's basically everything except for Don Quixote and the 7 drop kid. Up next, we have personally my favorite card in this deck, two copies of the six drop king, and then two copies of the five drop queen. King is without a doubt the, if this was at four copies, this deck would be insane card for this deck. On play, Don minus one, 7,000 power, KO one of your opponent's characters with a cost of four or less. Remember all those really powerful vanillas I was telling you about? Yeah, this card trades with them so awesomely, and he himself is already a base 7,000, which is perfect math. And alongside King, we do have Queen, who is a blocker at 6,000. 
1,000 power on play, down minus one, draw two, and trash one from your hand. So again, a basically plus one on board. You're not losing any advantage, but you're gaining a card in play that is strong and has blocker. Again, before we get to the really niche cards, let's talk about the vanillas. Four copies of page one, 6,000 vanilla. Four copies of purple X Drake, 5,000 vanilla. Four copies of sheep's head, 4,000 vanilla. And then four copies of gin rummy, the 3,000 vanilla. Again, the only ones that are really worth talking about are the five and six, especially page one, because he combos nicely with the ulti that's in this deck to let you get like two bodies and board at the same time. Uh, speaking of ulti, she is actually the 2,000 counter for the deck, as well as on play, Don minus one, play one, page one, with a cost of four or less from your hand. So like you play here, pay four, put one back, and then you can summon this as well. I don't do that actually that often when I'm playing purple, only if I'm like super ahead against my opponent because it is a minus one from hand and you're losing out on 3000 counter, which is not the best if you're trying to be defensive because the main way that people try to beat the purple deck is by rushing you down. So maximizing the cards in hand that can give you defense might be a priority for you when you're playing. From there, we have four copies of Sasaki and then two copies of Jack. On play, Don minus one, draw a card. Three cost, 4000 power. On play, trash a card from hand to add a card from your Don deck and set it to active. So that's basically plus one Don in board. He's essentially a two drop card, but he can help you fuel your Don minus effects a little bit quicker. And then finally rounding off all the characters, we have four copies of Black Maria, the 2000 blocker. And then we have two copies of who's who a three cost 3000 power on play Don minus one KO one of your opponent's characters with a cost of three or less trigger play this card so he's like killer but he can kill anything that's three cost or less for Don minus one not just rested three drop or less cards the events and stages we have two copies of lead performer disaster two copies of brachio bomber and then four copies of blast breath Blast Breath is probably the strongest counter in this deck. It's a one cost 4,000 counter event card. So one cost, dime minus one. So you can literally just have one Dawn, rest it, and then put it back. And you can achieve the cost of this card. Gain 4,000 power during that battle. Really strong. Saves your butt all the time. We have the six drop Brachio Bomber main. KO one of your opponent's characters with a cost of six or less. Then add one Dawn from your Dawn deck and set it as, as, as active. And then trigger trigger add one dawn from your dawn deck and set it as active so in the life it's just a plus one dawn but on board it's a ko card plus it gives you a dawn back to use for a dawn minus effect later and then finally we have the probably worst event card out of all three of these in lead performer disaster four cost main draw one then add one card from your dawn deck and set it as active trigger activate this card's main effect yeah it's a bunch of like resources that you can gain when you check it in the life but actually using it from your hand and like wasting the four dawn just never feels good i'd almost always rather put it on leaders or characters or just like play more more cards in my hand so as much as it's nice to ramp we have easier ways to do it in this deck like the stage card of this deck and arguably the most important piece in four copies of onigashima island this card is the heart and soul of this deck the sooner you see it the quicker you win the game three cost stage card activate main rest this stage if your leader has the animal kingdom pirates type add one dawn from your dawn deck and rest it so instead of setting to active you just get a dawn that's rested and you can do this as early as playing the card so literally on your second turn going first if you have three dawn you're playing this you're playing this you're going boom and then you're adding a fourth dawn giving you a total of four and you can do that every single turn afterwards just getting you closer and closer to your really high costed dawn minus effects like your kaido leader or your nine drop kaido and what else is there to say other than purple is probably the best late game deck period in one piece if i knew for a fact the game i was playing was going to 12 turns deep, I'm picking the purple starter deck every day of the week. And it only gets better once you get multiple copies of starter decks thrown in there. Having four copies of things like king, four copies of queen, just makes the power level exceptionally high. But in terms of like just the starter deck by itself, I'd give it a solid seven. It's consistent, it's strong. If you play smart, play defensive, you can beat all of these decks. And then there's one final little ranking, I guess, of the best to worst starter decks. I think Kaido is the best one, especially if you take into account getting 
multiple starter decks and the longevity of how good that deck will be. Uh, then it goes Kid as a very, very close second. Just the cards in this deck are so strong. Out of the box, this deck is as competitive as it gets. Uh, then we got Crocodile. I just love having control. I love interacting with my opponent's board, and this deck does it the best. And then finally, we got Luffy. I think the effects are cute. I think it's really powerful and should be respected, but in terms of like overall power level, it's definitely the weakest. And boom, there you guys go. That does it for the opening of the One Piece Super Pre-Release Starter Decks. Again, I want to recommend if you don't already have one of these or plan on playing in a pre-release event, don't feel like you have to buy them so you can participate in the Deck Limited series. We're only two months away from the official release, and these decks are going to have the exact same cards at much cheaper MSRPs in December. But if you really want to start playing One Piece, I recommend getting the Purple Starter Deck as soon as possible. With all that being said, I've been your true champion, Steven. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Peace.